In case you hadn't noticed it, today, October the 19th, is Black Wednesday, the 40th anniversary of that day in 1977 when the apartheid government clamped down on the media, detained journalists, banned newspapers, jailed people, cracked down completely. And of course we should always remember this, but it's not just history, particularly not now. Today, this year, I think it should be a clarion call to action. Sort of thing we could say, now is the time for all good people to come to the aid of who? Well, I would say the Broadcasting, Electronic, Media and Allied Workers Union and the Commercial, uh, the, I beg your pardon, Communication Workers Union, who are the two unions that still remain within the SABC. Last week, they joined the demand, broad demand, uh, for those long delayed appointments to the SABC board to be made. At the same time, they also issued a strike call. Now, well, the board appointments, as you may have noticed, were this week, were made. But the unions wanted much more, and I think they have a right to demand that. They're calling for the recall of all those irregularly appointed managers, etc. Those who were involved in the intimidation and the illegal sacking of, of journalists from the SABC. They also, of course, want pay rises, but that's down the list. And why should this concern us? Why should it concern you and, and me? Isn't it just a matter of government, management, and, and the workers in the SABC? I, I don't think so. Because you see, access to reliable, honest information is essential in any democracy. Anything that pretends to be a democracy needs access to such information. And the public broadcaster should be at the core of this. It's much more difficult to deal with the private sector. You know, one can't stop people from buying influence, from buying newspapers, setting up um, television stations, etc., with or without the connivance of, of politicians that become then mere propaganda vehicles. That's always going to happen. The public broadcaster should be different. It should be answerable to the public. It should have a minimum, as little as possible, influence and manipulation. It's a multi platform, a multitasking platform. It's, it's television, radio, everything. And therefore, it has always been, and always will be, I think, a target for politicians, particularly those who think that, well, if they can manage the media, they can control the masses. It's a myth. They cannot do that. But it is a dangerous thing, because at the very least, by manipulating the media, politicians or whoever, whether it be business or politicians, it boils down to, at the very least, confusion or manipulation of elections or voting uh, patterns, etc. Or it could extend to the, what happened in Rwanda in 1994, where the media actually encouraged ethnic tensions which led to genocide. Anyhow, that is going to be the focus of my Inside Labour column this week, which you can access on this platform, Fin24, tomorrow, and a version of which will appear in the City Press business section on Sunday. Until then, once again, over to you. Criticisms, suggestions, comments, whatever, to editor at fin24.com. That's editor at fin24.com. And for this week, that's all from me. Cheers.